If I really believe that by his stripes, people can be healed and healing flows from the laying on of hands, I'll lay hands on people. If I really believe that that corresponding action, I believe that if we lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. I believe that. Can anybody say amen? amen. I can't explain when it's going to manifest and when, when it manifests right away versus when it manifests the next day or the next year. That's not my job to explain when it's supposed to manifest. It's just my job to act on what I believe. If I believe that I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, then I should be laying hands on the sick. Yeah. Right. If I believe that the world needs the gospel, then I better preach it like I got no tomorrow. I need to preach it. We need to preach it like it's the bottom of the ninth. And we're behind. And we got to squeak out a bunt or get walked or, you know, move in front of the ball as the pitcher's thrown it so we can get hit by the pitch and get to first base. And then we got to find a way to steal second. Advance on a sacrifice play on a sacrifice fly to right field. Steal home plate if we have to. A lot of stealing going on here, breaking the Ten Commandments, man. <laughs> we got to we got to know it's now. You should listen to the next couple uh, Think like a champion says, I'll be talking about this, how to handle life in the last days. I want to be this dude who builds on the rock. Daniel 1132 is one of my favorite verses, and I'll tell you in the New American Standard Bible, Daniel 1132 says those who know their God, the second part of this, the people who know their God will be strong and take action. Wow. Go back to they'll be strong and do what? If you're not taking action, it is a, there's a knowing God problem. Because when you know God, you're going to take action. If you're not taking action, if you're afraid to step out in faith to share the gospel, step out in faith to plant your seed, step out in faith to forgive someone, step out in faith to declare I'm healed by his stripes. If you are not taking the next step, it's a knowing God problem, because if you really knew God, you don't mind taking the step. Jesus, Peter said Jesus is walking on the water and the disciples are freaking out. They see Jesus walking on the water and they say it's a ghost. Yes, it's the Holy Ghost in him. But they were afraid. They saw Jesus walking on the water and they said, that can't be him. It's a ghost. But Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come. And what happened? He said, Lord, if it's you, if that's really you, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. He just gave him one word. Come. And he got out of the boat and literally started walking on water. But the Bible says when the wind blew, when Peter saw the wind, he became afraid and he began to sink. He saw the wind. I don't know how you see the wind. It's invisible, but he saw it. If we, if we can see the wind, we should see our healing. If we can see the wind when it's invisible, we should see God who's invisible. We should see our blessing, even though it's invisible. We should see our breakthrough, even though it's invisible. And we should walk in the invisible realms of faith, no matter what it looks like, because even Peter was walking by faith in the wind when he was seeing it, when it wasn't even something you can see. You can see the evidence of it. You can see the, the effect of it, but you can't see the actual wind. But seeing the wind, he became afraid and he began to sink. You notice the progression. He got his focus off of Jesus. Jesus said, come. And verse 29 says he's walking on the water. He's literally walking on the water. He said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. We think Jesus is the only person to ever walk on water. But Peter was walking on it, too. 
It doesn't say and Peter got out of the boat and sank. It says he got out of the boat and walked. But then he got his focus off of Jesus and on the wind. That's when he became afraid and began to sink. He didn't sink as soon as he got out of the boat. He walked on the water as soon as he got out of the boat. What does that tell us? We got to get out of the boat. What does that tell us? We got to start walking. What does that tell us? When you start focusing on the wind, you're going to become afraid. So let's not focus on the wind. Let's focus on the one who can stop the wind. The good news is, is when Peter began to sink, he cried out still to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. And Jesus grabbed him. And they got into the boat and the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshiped him and said, you, you, you are certainly God's son, What you just did. But Peter took action. So this word in Daniel 11, 32, those who know their God will be strong and take action. The King James uses a different word in Daniel 11, 32. He says those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Daniel 11, 32, those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. One translation says take action. Another translation says do exploits. That seems like or sounds like two different things. So how did one translator the New American Standard guys, how did they come up with take action while the King James people came up with do exploits? Because if you go back to the Hebrew language that this is written in, the word there for take action literally is translated as they will carry out great exploits. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I want you to know how grateful I am. And if you want more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that we can stay connected. I also want to invite you to join me live every Sunday right here on the Gregory Dickow YouTube channel for our Sunday morning worship experience featuring music and worship from Life Changers Worship and a powerful word from the Lord Jesus Christ to you. We go live every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notifications bell so you don't miss it. I can't wait to see you next time. God bless.